What was the most embarrassing tantrum you've seen a grown adult throw? Story one. I posted this before, but I witnessed some lady having a full-blown tantrum in a Culver's drive through I was on the headset that day, and when she pulled up to the order screen, they asked for her order. She snapped back that she wasn't ready, so I told her to go ahead and order when she was ready. For whatever reason, that set her off because she again snapped back and said, You know what? Just for that, I will take my time. She sat silent in her car for a couple of minutes, and I could hear the cars behind her start to honk. The car directly behind her must have caught on to her just sitting there, refusing to order, so he pulled around her, drove up to my window, and asked if he could order directly from me. The other cars in line must have noticed as well because when I handed him his receipt, they began pulling in front of the lady refusing to order and started a new line at my window, ordering directly from me. The lady who refused to order went absolutely bananas. She laid on her horn, grabbed her steering wheel and started thrashing around, shaking her car violently, screaming at the top of her lungs that people were cutting in front of her. She eventually drove around to my drive through window, gave me the finger and did a burnout. I think that was the biggest tantrum I've seen an adult throw. I love imagining these people relaying stories like this to their loved ones. You won't believe how that girl at the window told me to order when I was ready. Story 2. I'm a paramedic, and I've seen some doozies over the years. One of my favorites was a doctor on the side of the interstate who very recently had a deputy's canine detached from his thigh. This started as a stop for speeding. He exited his vehicle and ignored multiple orders from the deputy to back up. So Timber went and did his job. Per protocol, EMS was called to evaluate the bites. I get there, and there's a guy on the side of the road, and the first thing he says to me is not, Hey man, I'm John. I screwed up. Or any of the common things you might greet another person and involved in your dilemma. Nope. He says to me, I don't need you guys here. I'm a doctor for the ED at Grady. That's in Atlanta, since this man refused to be a patient. I'm not bound by the hippopotamus. Now Grady is a well-known hospital around Atlanta, the southeast in general. I tell the guy, Look man, it's just standard procedure that we evaluate all canine bites. What happened next was the extra fun part. The deputy had the guy's pants pulled down for us and had lights on him. Usually what I do is irrigate the wound, slap a bandage on it, then off to jail we go or to the ER for stitches. When you're in police custody, you don't have the right to refuse medical care. Little known fact. The deputy has the right to withhold it within reason. I approach him anyway, thinking this is just some and I'm going to check him out and dip out back to my recliner. I snap my gloves on and pick a syringe out of my wound care kit. As I walk to the guy, he loses his marbles. He spits at me, tries to kick at me, which was comical with his pants around his ankles, and is screaming, I don't need a paramedic! I can do your job! I'm a goddamn doctor! At this point, we're just keeping a few feet between us and his waddling butt. That is until he gets a leg free of his pants. This part happens with a surprising amount of speed. He kicks at me. I grab his ankle and turn him over face down in the gravel. He gets tased, pulled up, and marched to the patrol car. The whole time he's screaming about how he doesn't need some sorry ass paramedic. I'm wondering to myself which medic over at Grady is currently shagging this guy's wife. The sprinkles on the icing of the cake were this. Court day. He served time for assaulting a medical professional, deputy, DUI, speeding, and a few other charges were dropped, but he pleaded not guilty to the assault charges. Dashcam footage was played for quite a large gathering in the courthouse. He got to relive that moment again. It was quite glorious. It continues to blow my mind in the early 21st century that people don't remember their cameras literally everywhere. He got what he deserved. Story 3. I work for a call center. The amount of people who about verifying their address and date of birth. We have one customer in particular who refuses every time. Screams at us when we tell him we cannot assist him if he won't verify the information. Finally verifies his information, then proceeds to be a complete for the remainder of the call. The last time I spoke to him, he went through his usual and then made some remark about how stupid it is that he has to waste his time verifying his information, like someone else would ever call to pay his bill. I finally said that he's wasting his own time and refusing to verify, and if he would prefer not, use the automated system and stop wasting our time as well. Haven't had him call in since. Been using the automated system. Screw that, dude. Story 4. My sister had the worst temper of anyone I've ever known. We were at the drive through at McDonald's. She ordered McNuggets with barbecue sauce. When we got to the window, she was handed the nuggets, but no sauce. So she just sat there, staring expectantly at the cashier. Finally, she said, Well, are you going to give me my sauce or what? The cashier turned to the side, away from the window. My sister said, Excuse me? Are you deaf? Where's my sauce? The cashier said, I'm getting it. The cashier handed over fistfuls of sauce packets and didn't do it in a friendly way. So my sister threw half of the packets directly at the face of the cashier and called her a witch. Then she drove out there like a bat out of hell. I absolutely hated going anywhere with my sister because she regularly caused the scene over the dumbest things. Hey there. If you haven't heard already, a few friends and I recently launched Rufus Rugs, your go-to destination for premium custom hand-tufted rugs. Looking to add a touch of your favorite anime like Nantrito to your space? 
We've got you covered. Or perhaps you're a die-hard Pokemon guy and want bus toys showcased for everyone to admire. No matter your style, we can bring your vision to life. Click the first link in the description to explore more. Story 5 My first job in high school was working at an ice cream parlor. We had three sizes. Two scoops, one scoop, and child size. Why wasn't it just large, medium, and small? Don't ask me. One day, a guy that had to be well into his 80s slowly walks in. It was early afternoon before the typical Russian night, so he was able to walk right up to the counter and stare at our board of flavors, toppings, etc. You could see on his face that he's getting irate for some reason. He's pacing quicker. Here and there, you can see his mouth open to talk, but he doesn't. Finally, he speaks. I want your smallest ice cream, but it's absolutely demeaning. I have to order a child size. I'm a grown man. I have children and grandchildren of my own. This goes on and I'm able to get a word in edgewise. He keeps going, and finally I interrupt. How about this? I just give you the smallest size we have, call it a small, and charge you for our cheapest ice cream. For some reason, this answer wasn't acceptable. He goes back into his rant about being a grown man and is now screaming at me about how insulted he was. I again reiterate, I can just give you a small ice cream. But no, anything beneath an institutional change wasn't going to stop this guy. He just kept going. Now other customers are starting to walk in and just watch him rant, screaming, do I look like a child? And things like, I have grandchildren older than you. Meanwhile, he's refusing to order something else, just considering the smallest size is small rather than child size, which was written on the board and won't leave either. The owner now comes from the back to see what's going on because there's now a long line. This had been going on for a good 10 minutes. As is usual in these situations, the owner introduces himself as the owner, which prompted the response, Good, your employee insulted me, as the man explained how I insulted him. The owner pivoted to the same thing I did. Can we just call it a small and be done with it? This made things worse. Finally, after him screaming at the owner for a few more minutes, the owner says, You came into my shop, don't like the name I used for my ice cream sizes, berated one of my employees and are berating me. Please stop using the phrase disrespected because you're the only one being disrespectful. Usually in internet stories, this is when the writer puts, Everyone clapped, but no one did. The situation was just too awkward for them to acknowledge they were paying attention. The old man went to talk and the owner cut him off and just said, Let me be frank. Tell me what will make you happy and I'll do it. The old man stood for a few seconds and just anger said, I'll never come back here again, and walked out the door. For someone so mad about getting a child-sized ice cream, he sure is acting like one. Story 6. My own mother. We were getting food at a food truck. They must have pressed the wrong button or something because she got charged $11 when it should have been $10. My mom immediately blows up at them about it, demanding they give her back her $1. The cashier apologized profusely and said it was a mistake. They got the manager or owner, whatever, to come over and help refund the money. The whole time they're trying to figure out the computer, my mom's ranting and raving about how they were overcharging her on purpose to pocket the money since she didn't tip. She calls them thieves and criminals. I straight up told her, I'll give you one dollar right now if you stop. And of course, she says it's all about the principal though. After they fix it, we leave. She keeps ranting to me about it, so I make up an excuse to leave. Later in a text, she tells me she went to the nearest police station after that and made a report against them. I very much wish I could have seen the officer's reaction. I bet they were dying laughing inside and probably threw her report away the moment she left. This woman is 40 years old. Story 7 I worked at McDonald's in high school. There were a few incidents, but one stands out above all the others. It's lunchtime, and we're busy. The filet of fish is not a particularly popular sandwich, so we only ever had a couple of pieces of fish ready to avoid having to throw them away. A dude comes to the drive-thru and orders four. I kid you not. As his order is popping up on our screen, the whole timer for the two fish we had already made was going off. We have to fry two regardless, so we decide to just make all four fresh. The manager apologizes and tells the guy to pull forward and wait. He's not happy, but he does. Meanwhile, we keep serving people who didn't order fish. After the third or so car gets the order and leaves, this dude is in the lobby demanding to see the manager. He wants to know why he's still waiting since we're clearly serving other people. The manager explains that none of those people ordered fish and that the fish will be ready in a couple of minutes. She apologizes again for the wait. The dude is pissed. He starts yelling about how it's ridiculous that we have no fish ready. The manager explains that the whole timer went off and she wasn't about to serve anyone expired food. Since we had to make a couple anyway, we're making all four fresh. Most people would be happy they weren't served questionable food. Not this guy. This guy went ballistic. He starts yelling about how we should have served him the two we had. We shouldn't serve anyone else until he has his order. Blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Then he threatens my manager with physical violence if he's not served his order right now. She tells him he needs to go out to his car right now or she'll be calling the police. The dude storms out of the restaurant, slamming the door so hard behind him that he broke it. A few seconds later, we hear screeching tires as he leaves the parking lot. Without his fish. Only psychopaths would order filet of fish I stand by this. If you agree with me, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Story 8. 
I used to work as a manager at a wing place. A lady and a guy got incredibly upset at us when they asked for their order and we didn't have it. We have been waiting for 30 minutes. How isn't it done? We haven't had any orders in the last week with that name. I don't know what to tell you. Well, we paid for it. Would it be under a different name, perhaps? Oh, yeah, her son ordered it. Try Jack Smith instead. Not actually the name, but you get it. Okay, that's not showing up either. How about you show me your receipt and I can look up the confirmation number? The girl hands me the receipt. The son ordered their food under the name EA Sports. It's in the game. When I let them know it was actually under and got the food for them, they legit were screaming at me and trying to say it's my fault. The dude started throwing chairs at other customers and hit the windows with a large rock. Police were called and they left. Eventually, the guy came back three hours later to yell at me and my crew more. And we called the police a second time. I pray for that son. And I hope he's okay. Lol, his parents seem a little off the rockers. They got a lot of weight in their shoulders. It's difficult being the parents of an absolute shad. Story 9 Oh man, I've been dying for a question like this. Does anyone remember the Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce release at McDonald's several years ago? Anyways, my friend loves the show, but couldn't go due to work, so I went to try and get some for him. There was a line of people I'd been waiting for a while. Apparently, some of the workers gave them out to people in the drive through so they were all out, and all they had were posters. A couple of guys were throwing complete temper tantrums and screaming and cussing out the workers for not properly handling out the sauce packets. After screaming at them for a good 10 to 15 minutes, the guy demands a poster. The worker says they have to purchase a meal in order to get the poster. Dude flips out again and orders a meal in a real condescending tone. As soon as he gets the meal in his poster, he takes his meal and starts throwing it against the walls and then takes his two children with the poster and walks away while cursing at them on the way out. Next few guys in the line do the same thing. They only had like five to eight posters. The vast majority of the people toward the front all threw baby tantrums and threw their food and drinks everywhere making a huge mess. Luckily, I recorded a decent amount of it. Absolutely insane how childish these grown men were acting over a <laughs> sauce packet. Most of them had their children with them too. It was honestly just so insane I couldn't believe it. Story 10. I do business with a local AT&T store. I was getting a phone for our company and this guy was trying to get an iPhone for his teenage daughter. I'm not sure what went on but they apparently didn't have the exact phone she wanted and they were going to have to order it. That wasn't good enough so he started having a full-blown temper tantrum saying the sales associate was ruining his daughter's birthday gift. The manager comes out to see what's going on and there's another customer who's in there and this dude is like 6'5", goatee, bald head, roided up with full sleeve tattoos and he says, hey, calm down. And the angry dad said, who said that? The bald giant said, I did. In a very angry voice and the dad just put his head down and shut up. The manager was trying to see what was going on and the dad was like, we're gonna go now. I wish I could say everyone clapped, but the sales associate was extremely grateful. Story 11. My father, probably more to do with the fact that I was related to him, that it ruined a day trip, but here it is. So at the time, we, mother, father, teenage brother, and preteen me, lived close to a great beach. There was a small amusement park next to it. A variety of issues meant going there as a family for a day out was a special treat, and something that was highly anticipated. We hadn't decided if we would do the beach, doing some boogie boarding, or the amusement park, water slides, crazy golf, so we took the boards with us, but in the end we decided not to use them. This was very bad. My mother was a deficient human being for bringing them with us and committing the crime of bringing unnecessary items on a day trip. In the car park, in the full view of everyone there, he was screaming. He threw his hat in the ground and was jumping up and down, clenching his fists as if he was having a vertical seizure. Of course, we knew not to say anything because he would just become violent. We had to walk on eggshells for the rest of the day. I have since gone no contact with him, and he was shocked convinced that someone had manipulated me into it because he never did anything that would make someone not want to be in a relationship with him. Story 12. I once had someone refuse to give me a name for an order, not food related. Their job was expected to take roughly half an hour. They were like, can't you just remember us? I said I might not be here when they get back, so give me any name. So they clearly made one up, something like John Smith. They came back hours later, even though they promised to be back in half an hour, gave me their real name instead of the fake one. They started getting pissed off when I couldn't find it. I remembered who they were eventually, but I thought it might be a good lesson in why you remember your damn fake names. Story 13. I was at a friendlies with a group of friends. One of them brought their boyfriend with them. We all got our treats and sat down. This dude comes to us and says, do you think I should complain about the slushy not having enough syrup? We all kind of agree that sure, it's okay to see if they can do something to fix it. He goes up there and talks to the girl at the register. I couldn't make out everything, but essentially, she told him that they made it the way they were told and she couldn't do anything. He takes what remains of his slushy and slams it on the counter, getting the girl full of slushy. He yells at her that she can take the drink back then. The manager tells him that he's got to go. We were all just in shock. Like, I didn't even know where to put my face. I was so embarrassed. Him, on the other hand, wasn't ashamed at all. My friend defends her boyfriend, saying that it wasn't a big deal and that they really should have fixed his drink. 
really pathetic to be the most immature person in the friendlies when there's probably a four-year-old eating ice cream and making a mess in the booth behind you. Story 14. I worked in customer service for a doctor's office credit card program. I spent 45 minutes trying to help a doctor change his password. It couldn't actually help him because every time we'd tell him to do something specific, he would do this stress eye sobbing kind of thing. He would remind me every 30 seconds that he went to school for eight years so he wouldn't have to deal with this. Mind you, he was clearly in his 20s to 30s, not an old guy who has an excuse not to know how to do this. After 45 minutes of this rotation, he finally passed the phone to his receptionist. We shared a laugh over his attitude, and we reset the password in 30 seconds. Story 15. The one I always remember happened over 20 years ago. Long story, slightly shorter. This was back before 9-11. A man and his girlfriend come to the gate at the airport. There was some mix-up where the girlfriend had given her luggage to the skycap but hadn't checked in for the flight, so she didn't have a boarding pass. The flight was oversold and there was no seat available for her. It was a flight to Washington, D.C., and it was the last one out until the following morning. When this guy finds out she can't get on the plane, he goes ballistic. He starts literally screaming at the gate agent. In a post-9-11 world, I'm reasonably certain he would have been arrested or at least kicked out of the airport. He's going on and on about how important he is, that he's a member of some platinum club. How dare his girlfriend not get on the plane? People with cheap tickets should be booted to accommodate her. He'll reach out to the corporate offices, etc., Basically, he was making a huge public a** out of himself. Well, it wasn't this gate agent's first rodeo, for sure. She let him scream himself out, and when he took a breath, she looked at him and said, There is exactly one person who can get your girlfriend on the plane. That person is me. I suggest you take a seat, be patient, and I'll see what I can do. He started going off again, and she said, louder than him, I will see what I can do. Finally, he sat down. She made some phone calls, typed in her computer, and finally came over the loudspeaker saying, this flight is overbooked. Do we have any customers willing to take a later flight for X dollars and flight vouchers? Silence. She asked a couple more times, raising the ante, and again, silence. Now, I had nowhere to be until Tuesday, so I could have easily taken a flight the next day, but I'll be damned if that dirtbag was going to get his way. It seems like everyone else there felt the same. No one took the offer. Eventually, she called the two of them over and said, I'm sorry. I've offered the max amount of vouchers I can, and no one is taking it. I need to start boarding now. If she needs to get out tonight, she can try another airline, or I can put her on tomorrow's flight right now. The guy was like, screw you, and walked off with his very embarrassed girlfriend in tow as he was muttering under his breath. Bye bye If the guy hadn't been such a first-class douche to the gate agent, who quite literally had nothing to do with the situation, she could have taken my seat and been on her way. The gate agent handled it so well. On the other hand, screw airlines for overbooking. That crap should be illegal. If you've made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sure you'd be interested in Women Share Man-Child Red Flags. You wouldn't believe Story 3. Can't wait to see you there.